Hey smokers, Draga One here, and today we're gonna be looking at Quake One for Macintosh. So this isn't going to be a full review of Quake One in its entirety, but simply a look at how the MacSoft port runs on my Power Mac G3, which Steve Jobs claimed in 1999 would be able to run at a smooth 60 frames per second. Take a look at the manual here, it's pretty much the exact same as the original Quake manual that came with the PC version of the game, except it has uh, the word Quake on it and MacSoft on it. It's pretty much the exact same manual, probably with more Macintosh related things in it. I haven't actually looked through the whole thing. Of course we have the back, which is somewhat distinct from the back of the PC version which has slightly different art. But the front is about the same. So in effort to be more old school than is probably necessary, I'm going to be playing Quake 1 on an Apple desktop bus keyboard and mouse. Yeah, probably not the best choice for gaming, but what the hell. The G3 has an Apple desktop bus port, why not use it? So let's go ahead and give this a try. Alright, so let's go ahead and install Quake. And then, there we go. Custom install. Definitely want to get Quake with 3D hardware acceleration. Now take a look at this. There's two different types of 3D renderers. One of them is, of course, for your Voodoo cards. The other one's for your ATI cards. Obviously, since we have an ATI card, we're going to stick with that. So, uh, I put on Mac SSD, obviously. No other choice. And go ahead and install. Which suggests you restart your computer. I don't like suggestions. Here's the Quake folder, it just randomly dumps on the root of the drive. And it specifically only installed the Rave version. Now, Rave, or Renderer Accelerated Virtual Engine, is a technology developed by Apple to work alongside its Quick Draw 3D technology. Apple developed Quick Draw 3D as a method for manipulating and displaying 3D objects and information. Rave can interact with Quick Draw 3D and other high level system software, such as OpenGL, for example, to provide a bridge to hardware accelerators. There's nothing in the maps folder. It's probably for custom maps, possibly. I don't know. What was in here again? Nothing. Okay. Um, this is your configuration file, which apparently will only get run to when the game launches, because usually. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this is the config. This is if you want any commands or script to be run at the when the game launches. And then of course we have our pack files. And have all the game information. There's a multiplayer manual. It tells you how to do multiplayer, which is very crucial. Online manual. Which really is just a readme file manual thing. This is the actual readme file. Also have a printed manual as well, obviously. So let's launch it. Holy balls. God, it's running so smooth. So you're probably wondering why we dropped into 640 by 480. Well, the 3D accelerated version of Quake, and pretty much, if I guess if I installed the regular version of Quake 2, or as well, uh, it would uh, also force 640 by 48. Now let me show you. Okay, working. No music. I don't know why. Got the CD in the frickin' drive. So CD game volume. This is this is the options menu. It's actually a Mac GUI. Here's our renderer info. I don't know what this red boxes. Um, apparently there are some options for... okay. There are some options for different resolutions, but... 
uh, it will only let me choose 640 by 480 and I don't think it would matter because it's only rendering at 640 by 480 so uh, I guess that's how they were getting that crazy 60 FPS that Steve Jobs was talking about on this machine and just had to run the game at 640 by 480 so you know that's fair uh, of course we don't have the default controls set uh, I'm gonna have to change these let's go ahead and uh, play a little bit of this this is Quake on Mac OS 9 on a Power Mac G3. Hmm. Where's the auto run key? Okay, thanks. Ugh, it runs like poop. Looks like poop. I'm poop. Look at poop. Lots of poop. Um, it's running out of higher resolution, it looks like. Okay, so video. Oh, well, you can actually change the resolution in software mode. And everything works. Hmm. Cut for the music, for fuck's sake. Jesus. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, hmm. <laughs> Quake actually changes the volume of CD playback. But it's not the Quake soundtrack. <laughs> the mouse isn't working! The mouse doesn't work while I hold shift. What? Why are you in 640 by 480, Quake? I'm gonna have a seizure. Oh, my eyes. My eyes. This, this is bulls. Ooh. Huh? Third time's a charm. Uh. Okay. So this is not really running in 720p. This is running in 800 by 600, probably. So the original Mac Quake doesn't have a method to run in anything other than two different resolutions. So right now we're looking at this in software mode. Open the door. Open the door. My quad damage is running out. Oh yeah. Oh dad. Okay, so software mode is ass and teases you and makes you think that you can run it in a higher resolution when you really can't. So let's set this shit back to six forty by four eighty. <laughs> Okay, so this is Quake with the Rave Renderer, and uh, from a little bit of testing I found out that you cannot run this game in anything other than 640x480. And also, when you're using an Apple desktop bus, mouse, and keyboard, you can't press W, Shift, and click the mouse at the same time, leading to many untimely deaths. I had to learn this the hard way, but now I can pretty effectively play this game on Nightmare Mode without taking too much damage. I had to just get used to the setup a little bit. Now this game does actually look like it's hitting the 60 FPS mark every once in a while. Uh, it's definitely smoother than software mode, uh, without a doubt. Uh, I really don't know why the CD audio isn't working. Uh, as already demonstrated, I uh, was able to play back a CD while playing the game, and I can even change the volume of the CD, but for some reason the CD playback isn't working, so that's a bit of a disappointment, and one of the best reasons to actually have the Quake CD is so you can actually get that Nine Inch Nails, you know what I'm saying, the Trent Reznor? The whole... Oh, shit. So yeah, it is a 
definitely a playable version of Quake, and I think it's way better than playing Quake on DOS. Not as good as playing the Dark Places version of Quake. That that really is the best way to play it, like, hands down. So until I'm able to figure out what the hell is going on with the CD audio, uh, I guess this is what I'll be rolling with, uh... For the time being. So, if anybody knows exactly, I could probably look this up, but uh, if anybody knows why the CD audio is not functional on Mac OS 9, please tell me so I can get that working and make another pointless video of Quake that you don't need to see. God damn it, Steve, I thought this game would run better. Where's the CD audio? Where was your demo on Macworld? We didn't get to see that shit, did we? No. Look at all those, like, muzzle flashes. They're, they're like, radial gradients. Yellow and transparent. Okay, well, I'm done with this game. Um, for, for now! <laughs> Alright, so that was the original Quake on the Power Mac G3. The computer that Steve Jobs says could run this game at 60 FPS, which it did for, you know, a couple moments in there. So I hope you enjoyed this brief experience into late 90s Mac gaming. This is Drago1, signing off.